welcome to episode 6 of the Carol Kirsch podcast. I'm back! Yes, I finally managed. Um, although, I don't know yet. <laughs> I just came out of a call with my family actually. Today is the first advent, it's still November. But we're getting ready for Christmas season. And anyways, my cousin was like, well, what's up with your podcast? I thought your YouTube channel is getting all big. And I was like, nah. I tried recording, uh, I don't know, three times, four times. I lost count, honestly. Um, there was always something wrong. I'm always nitpicking. There's always like something wrong with light. And I was just like, stop overthinking this. Just do it. So that's what I did. I just took my phone, honestly, from my perspective. From my perspective right now, the picture quality looks fine. So maybe this is this is the future super simple setup. Let's hope so. I'm in a new corner as well. It's uh, actually my spinning corner over here. So um, maybe this is cool um, and I'm comfortable, which is awesome. Sorry, you're probably gonna see my knee in the corner. I'm notorious for pulling my legs close to me. Usually that's my comfy zone, but um, yeah, uh, my Caro, my, my Caro, yes, my name is Caro and this podcast is about all the crafty things I like to do, which is mainly knitting, spinning, yarn related hobbies. I do some natural dyeing as well. Um, the occasional crochet and sewing project and some even rarer scene arts and crafts projects. Although I'm kind of doing that a lot lately, but not much to show for, unfortunately. Anyways, let's just start. Welcome back any old viewers and uh, welcome if you are a, a new viewer and um, it's very lovely to have you here. Uh, I do have a few finished objects to share obviously it's been a while and one that i really wish that would be done but it's still on my needles it's the only project on my needles um but yeah i have lots of knitting plans and i really want to get that done um i'm actually wearing knitwear i think this is the first episode where i'm actually wearing knitwear so Let's uh, tell you, you know this project. This is my Shake It Up shawl by Anna and Johanna. Really love this knit. It's very fun, very entertaining, different things to do all around. I knit this with Malabrigo yarn in obviously three different colorways, which I'm not going to remember right now. But yes, let's start with the knitting and the finished objects. The first finished object I have are the Dear Bjorn socks by Anna, no, not Anna Johanna, um, by Natalia Sinelchikova. Sorry if I'm butchering that. I knit these not with a pattern, just off of pictures. I've seen, I've explained this before, um, this pattern appeared in the 25, no, 52 Weeks of Socks book um, published by Lane and I was too late to actually get it but I really like these so I wanted to knit them. Um, as a baseline recipe I used the Alltagssocken by Nora of the Cat and White podcast and as a heel I used the fish lips kiss heel so this is a mashup of three different um, knitting patterns and yes they're done they're completely not the same um, originally they were supposed to be for me then they I finished the first sock and that turned out too big so I decided they're gonna be for my husband and now I actually decided I'm going to gift them to a friend of the family who let us stay at her summer house in the summer. So it's been quite a while. I'm really late to this. Anyways, so I had to actually shorten the first sock again to make it fit a female foot. And I'm just assuming that she's roughly the same size as me. We'll see. Let's hope so. Yes, but one project done and I'm very happy. I used, I don't know what I used. I'll put it down there. It's some 
commercial yarn. Uh, the second finished object is another small one and one I really needed and one I've used a lot already and these are the autumnal, I think they're just called, autumnal mitts, I think they're called and I actually already also knit them very in fall colors. So it's this gorgeous orange and I held two strands together, so there's also an orange mohair. The mohair is knitting for olive, silk mohair, and the orange is skeiny dipping Mary Cash, so it's merino cashmere blend, but I don't know the colorway. Again, I'll put it down here. The pattern is by Joe Bangles. <laughs> I'm not prepared. I virtually just sat down to record this, so now I'm realizing I have no ideas. I hope I can remember all the pattern publishers. If not, they'll just appear in the downboard and I'll deal with that in the editing, but I'm not gonna stop and redo this just because I am blanking on a few names here. But yeah, I really love them. I can put them on and show you. Uh, yeah, I knit them for work because the heating system at our work is, when it works, is really nice and toasty, but sometimes, like, we're heating with a fire oven, like, it's, I don't know, it's a complicated system anyways, but if you don't heat up the oven a day prior, then the next day it's kind of cold, so usually on Mondays it's pretty cold there. <laughs> so, and anyways, even if it were warm, my hands always get cold on the computer because they're just there and I guess the blood circulation doesn't really go there whatever so they're really necessary at work and um, yeah they're really good they're doing what they're supposed to I have a third finished object which is a tiny skirt for my daughter she's already worn it already washed um, once and I knit this out of my hand spun. Oh, I love this so much. You might remember, I think I think I actually showed you this in the last episode. Um, this was hand spun out of um, my advent calendar mix. So I had like a pink and I think this was originally kind of, I don't even remember, I think it was a fairly bright purple. And this was a reddish purple. And again, something more bright. I don't know. I over dyed it all with blue food dye after I spun it. I actually dyed it once uh, in um, when it was still just wool. And then once again after I uh, spinning it up. Yes, but I really love this. This is. Again, knitting for Olive, but this time the pattern designer and or I mean, it's the same the same woman and um, the skirt the pattern is called mullet skirt so it's super simple you basically just cast on a bunch of stitches do the mullet stitch all the way up and then you decrease a bit um, knit like kind of double double width brim fold it over have a little elastic in there and then it's done the elastic I put in there actually um, I can extend if I ever wanted to and then she can grow into it but there's still quite a bit of room this sits on her very loosely right now so I think we'll have lots of wear out of this anyways but I really love it it's just fun to knit with your hand spun it's just so addicting especially if it's a little bit stripy like this then you just want to get I mean everybody knows how addicting it is to knit with stripy yarn and even more so when it's hand spun it's just very very satisfying and I guess I'm lucky in the sense that I have a child where one skein of hand spun is kind of the perfect size um, for yeah one garment for a child um, I have a little bit left over of this because it was a 120 gram skein and I'm planning on knitting her a pair of leg warmers so it's pretty much the bright color left on it and then I think it goes back into something similar to this so I'll see if I can I don't know if I hold them together or something because I don't want two completely different looking leg warmers I want them to look kind of similar so maybe I hold 
kind of the beginning and the end of the thread together that it'll be just a mix of the two something mauled to make some leg warmers because now it's obviously cold so I want but I knit this with winter in mind um, so I think something to warm her legs also and then she can wear this on the playground or something on a dry day obviously so yes third finished object and I'm very very stoked about it Yes, and I have to say I knit all this even though I was supposed to knit that cardigan for my sister. So as you remember, um, last time I haven't cast this on this project, but it was very, very much in my uh, queue. I was just waiting on the yarn. Oh no, I actually ordered the yarn. I had to dye it, right? Which I did. And... Uh, yeah, I didn't do it that very weekend as I was planning, but soon thereafter and I started knitting pretty much, I knit most of this during our vacation to the Baltic Sea where we were in summer, which I also think I mentioned last episode, um, that house we stayed at of our friend's family friend. <laughs> Sorry, gibberish, I'm just talking gibberish. Uh, yes, and then after that vacation, I met up with my sister, whom this is for, and put it on her, and we decided it's too small, and I had to rip it all back. So, let me show you anyways. Obviously, I'm a bit more ahead now again, but, um, yeah, this is how far I am with the rose cardigan. I am pretty much done very close to completion. So you knit this in pieces, right? So I knit all four of these panels. So you knit front and back on both sides where you have your fade happening of the four colors. So if you follow the pattern, obviously you can adapt with more or less colors if you wanted to. And um, yeah, I'm really, really happy with the whole fade thing because yeah, so the way my sister, I mean, this is pretty much the way my sister wanted. I had to um, order a bit more because my first dye experiment, if you want to call it, ended up a little bit bluer. I didn't, I mean, I didn't throw away anyways uh, anything, but um, we did take out a few skeins that I dyed that were supposed to kind of go here which were bluer and then this color was supposed to be the last one which is now the third one and I just bought a bit more undyed which we pushed at the end and then we took out some blue skeins so that it's just grayer rather than blue how it would have been with my way of dyeing things but yeah um, I pretty much just used two colors of acid dyes so um, as I mentioned last time I bought the Filculana Anina, which is a 100% superwash merino, yes, in the very light gray, that's the color, and um, over dyed this with some silver gray and, what's it called, navy, I think it's just called navy of the, um, I forgot the brand name, the typical acid dyes, not Ashford, not Dahmer, the third brand. <laughs> I'll put it down here. But yeah, those are the color names if anybody's interested. And I just did a gradient of a fairly dark with lots of the silver gray. I actually ordered also some black, but um, they sent me a green. <laughs> so I had to do it with a gray, but that's okay. And um, obviously a little less of both colors then the third color is just with a gray there's no blue in here so this is the third and then just undyed at the very end and yes i think it turned out really really nicely and yeah and um the process on the cardigan now i'm back to Obviously having all four parts, I already have all the ribbing and I'm at the last section, which is this beautiful, I love this so much, sorry, let's get this out of here, this cable detail that runs around the whole front.
front opening and kind of builds the neck band as well. So this is the shoulder. There you have a very nice cable as well running down the arm. And then you have in the pattern is a longer ribbing like the cuffs, but yeah, I had to go a size up obviously because yeah, I don't know. The sizing of the sweater is, uh, the cardigan is a little bit weird in the pattern because yeah, I told you last time how I was swatching like a maniac to hit gauge, which I did with these needles and the yarn. And um, obviously I asked my sister to give me her bus circumference and she landed right between the smallest and the first or the smallest and second size. And Andrea Maori um, suggests to size down rather than up because I guess it's a baggy oversized cardigan and you could get swallowed by it. Um, but the arms were really, really tight. If you look at the pattern picture, I'll probably blend it in somewhere. Um, it looks super loose around um, the arms. And that's that was one of the important features for my sister because she wants to wear the cardigan at work and she's wearing a blouse underneath and it's always a little bit of a hassle if you have to kind of make your blouse go nicely underneath. So she wanted it fairly loose around there and it was very, very tight. And I did notice that while I was knitting, um, I mean, it is kind of hard to try it on you because it's all knit in pieces. You don't really have the arm you can just pull on. Um, and it's also a question where it lands, kind of, obviously, because your underarm gets wider. Um, so yeah, I just figured my sister is fairly skinny and small, so it would probably be okay on her, but it wasn't. And that's why we decided to go back. It also looked fairly short then, but again, it was very hard to hold it on her and kind of imagine, okay, now there's still some ribbing. So... As fun as this construction is and it interest, as interesting it is for knitting, it's kind of not great if you have to knit for somebody else and kind of, yeah, make it fit, right? Um, so you can customize it, obviously, but it's, yeah, it's just, it's, I don't know. Um, anyways. So uh, let's hope it'll fit her. I mean, I haven't put it on her since. Um, I can put it on me and in the end, even though my sister is very short, she has a long torso. So we're just kind of assuming that me and her are sort of similar. I'm, she's just a little bit skinnier so she won't fill it out as much. Um, and I'm definitely not looking swamped in it. Lengthwise, it's okay. So let's hope it's okay for my sister as well. Um, I'll keep you updated. Um, yeah, my goal was after I had to rip back the first time to finish it by November. Now we're at end of November. I'm still not done. So obviously that didn't happen, but I really, really, really want to get it done before December. And I don't know. I don't know. I mean, yeah, the whole reason for that was that it's still worth sending it to her before Christmas, but now with the whole COVID, nobody knows and they're living in Denmark. If they even can come to us, I think I'll send it in any case. Uh, but yeah, it would obviously be nice for it to still arrive before Christmas because it's definitely not a Christmas present. Um, uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> I might be able to beat Christmas by a couple of days. Um, yes, but that's how far I am. I, I It's a really nice cardigan though I'm very very jealous like I'm not gonna knit this again at least not <laughs> in the near future um but just because it feels like this is already the second time I'm knitting this um so but I think it's once it's done it's gonna be awesome and everybody's just gonna be jealous of my sister and wants it too but um yeah it's it's getting there technically it should already be done but whatever that's how things go and with me clearly somehow it always ends up that way i always have to go back with all my recent projects i feel like i had to i had to go back once or even twice or three times 
And um, yes, I do have a, quite a bit of leftovers of that yarn. Um, there's obviously some stuff, these were my test skeins, I think, where I just was playing around with the color to see how it would go. These were the ones that we took out that would have made the sweater a little bit too blue. And then I just have leftovers from the ones that I actually used for the cardigan and I already have plans for this and I think I actually have enough because this is obviously a super oversized sweater so you need a cardigan. I keep saying sweater, sorry. Um, but just with the leftovers, I'm really weighed. I think I have something like 300, 400 grams left over and I think that might actually be enough for a sweater, a tight fitting sweater for me and for my daughter so that's the plan and i want to kind of have a mashup of the flax light i think it's called it's a free pattern by tin can knits so i'm going to use that pattern but kind of make a so faded out of it whatever i'm just going to put a fade into it obviously because i have different colors here i've been playing around with how i want to put them together that it kind of makes sense for both sweaters and yes but obviously I'm not gonna start this before I'm done with my sister's cardigan. But that's the plan for the leftovers here. And yes, that's almost actually not all my knitting. Let me show you. Um, I do have one more work in progress. Now I was thinking, what's the word? Um, and let me show this to you because I actually did make a little bit of progress on here. And that is my vanilla sock which I'm knitting out of Retrosaria Mondin which is a sock yarn I think I don't have the ball bend here so I can't really tell you the contents but I did mention it before um, yeah just vanilla sock I did a twisted rib for a few rows, I don't even remember. I did, I put the detail in my Ravelry page. Um, and yeah, but I don't know if you can tell. I was telling you last time how I really like this striping, which is still true, but I noticed it's, it's just loose. And I have the feeling now it has to do with the tiny needles. I have the feeling there's kind of a limit how tight I can knit with small needles. Uh, I do want to give it a go because these are 2.25s now, yeah. I do want to try knitting with 1.75, I think, and see if that makes any difference, even though I'm kind of terrified of that. What's flying around here? Um, I just don't like knitting with these super skinny needles, but I do want to try that because these still seem somehow... A little bit too loose up here I changed my tension but it's just not fun with it I just thread the, um, the, the yarn once more through my fingers but I don't really enjoy it that much that seemed to have tightened up the gauge quite a bit but obviously it changed the way the color is pooling now so now all the yellow blue is on one side and then all the gray kind of is on the other side it's still pretty but obviously i <laughs> prefer this but i guess beggars can't be choosers uh yes so slowly making progress on these but yeah i as i mentioned now probably the third time i really want to get that cardigan done i really want to get that cardigan done i mean i there is just something about knitting for others if you told them you're knitting for them. It's it's not like my sister is putting any kind of stress on me, but I guess you're just putting it yourself on you because, yeah, I gave it for her birthday, which was in July, and now it's like December, or not quite, but still. And um, I just want to give it to her, you know, and I know she's waiting on it. She wants to wear it. It's cold now. <laughs> And even though she's working at home and not in her cold office, obviously you get cold there too because you're just sitting still all day in front of the computer. So yes, I just want to get it done. 
and then I can focus on all the other projects. For instance, those two sweaters I mentioned, but there's a bunch more. I actually am looking longingly at my spinning wheel, which I haven't touched at all, which I'm really, really sad about. I even got new bobbins, but I haven't really used them. Um, so I definitely want to change that too, but I'm not going to get into spinning before I'm done with that. Cardigan. And now I promise I stop cording talking about the cardigan, but that's pretty much on my knitting mind. I do have a few acquisitions and let me quickly show those to you. Um, I keep bumping my head in this. This is, I don't know if you can tell, but this is kind of a little bit tilted because we're the second story, sort of a roof apartment, but it's very um, subtle uh, angle, I guess. So it's not super annoying with furniture. But anyways, um, I did get some more sock yarn because I'm such a consistent sock knitter. <laughs> but I felt bad for not giving those socks to my husband after all. Um, so I decided to purchase some sock yarn, but this time a little bit thicker weight. Like this is, I think, a proper DK weight. And this, I guess, is more in the sport section and they're both opal and this one is opal lifestyle it's called and the colorway is der wilde it's the wild one and this one is opal comedy and the colorway is satire 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 i don't know how you pronounce that in english but i think it's the same word and yes Eventually, these are gonna be turned into socks. But more excitedly, um, as I mentioned, when I put that cardigan on my sister, who I promise not to talk about it anymore, but we were in Amsterdam and I went to the Stephen and Penelope flagship store of Stephen West, I think. I don't know if he has, if that's his flagship store, if he has other stores. I don't even know where he's from. Maybe it is Dutch. Um, but yeah, uh, this was purely a souvenir purchase. I went there with my mom and aunt into that shop. Um, and they purchased more than me, I think, in the end, even though I dragged them in there. Um, but yeah, it was, it was pretty fun. Actually, also, we also bought some stitch markers, uh, me and my mom together. Um, which I still haven't gotten around to, what's the word, um, get, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little bit distracted and then the light is kind of leaving me and the picture still looks okay, so fingers crossed this might actually work. And I just remember, there's actually one other thing that I got, um, where is it though, because meanwhile the birthday of my mom also happened. And I made her a little project bag, actually a smaller version of this. They made them together. And the real present was a row counter. And I did get one for myself as well. Okay, I had to find it there. Um, yes, it is a row counter. And I got it off of a Etsy shop. Oh. How do I show this? I have no idea how to show this. Maybe let's do it like this. Okay, uh, I can't get it to focus. But anyways, I'll insert a picture. But it's a super beautiful row counter that I got off a Etsy store. And the Etsy store is called Talkins BY, I believe. I'll put it again in the information thing. And it's this funny type of row counter which is quite dangly not gonna lie i think you can more call it jewelry for your knitting um but yeah the reason why i really wanted to try this out anyways i mean i kind of suspected it would be a little bit dangly and maybe not quite as um how you call this effective for what it's supposed to do but i do have these plastic row counters by prim i think is selling them i got them off amazon probably by some no brand um, 
And yeah, the numbers are slowly rubbing off because obviously you're turning the wheel inside and it's rubbing against the outside and it's plastic and it's just some kind of color that they're using and it's rubbing off and it's really getting difficult to tell what row you're on. And um, these obviously won't rub off because it's engraved into these little thingies. Where's the camera? Yeah, there. Yeah, I won't focus on it. Um, but again, I'll have a picture and um, yes, but it's beautiful in any case and it's just fun having them in your hands. Um, it reminds me of these, and I'm hoping I'm not offending anybody here, these um, prayer, I don't even know what they're called, I think rosemaries? Is that, is that what it's called? I should Google this. Um, but yeah, it's just fun to kind of... <laughs> guide them through your hands when you're fidgeting or something. So um, yeah, I got these and I got one for my mom as well with a different dangly thingy and um, if they're not useful, at least they're very, very pretty. <laughs> so yeah, that was all the knitting content and yarn related content I have. Um, but as I mentioned in the beginning, I am really into art right now but there's just not a whole lot I can show because it's really just tinkering around and trying to create a habit more than actual artwork if that makes any sense um like art for me or at least that's what I want from it is supposed to be something similar like knitting but yeah just just diversifying my hobby I guess I really enjoy it and often I'm very happy with what I create too but um, at the same time I suffer from I think a lot of people have that issue that you always look at what other people do and you know you're not supposed to but obviously that's what you do you see all the great things on Instagram and then you try to do something and then either you feel like you're just copying others or you're uninspired or you don't even sit down and do it. And um, yeah, or you do something and then you're just not happy with the outcome. And I'm really trying to kind of get away from that and just create a habit of just doing it and just touching paint and just creating a little bit and that's why I'm really into this whole art journaling idea because that's perfect for that I think you don't have the feeling you have like a canvas in front of you and that needs to become something you just have I mean it's I, that journal I showed last uh, like the episode where I did show a little bit of my um, art journaling it's it's just scrap paper really it's called a junk journal for a reason and um, you're not really wasting anything other than a bit of paint but um, if you're never touching it and just letting it dry out you're wasting it even more so yeah I just want to create this habit for myself of creating art every day even if it's just for a few minutes and I'm working on setting up my space in my art room there and I mean I'm lucky enough to have even a room <laughs> that I can call my art room and it's being called art room by everybody now um, sometimes I still try to call it the office because technically we said it's for me and my husband but <laughs> let's face it I'm the only one who is in there I'm actually if I'm working at home which I'm not doing a lot of but if I do then I am in there as well so it's also an office but mainly an art room I also do the natural dyeing and all that in there and um, but yeah anyway so I want to have that space set up in a way that it's easy to just sit down and do some art and I'm trying to tell myself I'm not gonna show all that to kind of release the pressure of having to show it everywhere but at the same time I do want to get a bit better at posting on Instagram and I don't know it's just yeah yeah you want all the things I want all the things you know <laughs> but um yeah I guess it's just a struggle um, yeah, but I guess that's all I have really to tell you on that front. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I actually, hang on, I do have one more thing. I did sign up for a course next year and the whole advertisement about that course, or at least big part of it, is finding your own style. I know a lot of these courses promise that. 
Um, but yeah, whatever. I just signed up and I really like the idea of that. So the way this course works and it's called Wanderlust 2021 by Kasha, Kasha Avery is her name. It's the same lady I mentioned with the advent calendar, um, which I think probably might be happening this year too. Who knows? Maybe if she'll put an advent calendar up this year, I might kind of do that as a lead up to January, which is when that course I signed up for is going to release the first class. So the way it works is every week of year 2021, you're going to get a kind of prompt video instruction with different teachers. I think there's like 27 teachers all together. Most of them are going to be by Kasha Avery. And yeah, you're learning different techniques of our journaling and all these teachers have very different styles and yeah the whole idea is really to just give you inspiration give you ideas give you techniques and find your own style and get creating and yeah build a habit and that's why i think it's good that every week you get something new you don't get it all at once or something like that because then you kind of just binge watch everything without actually doing something because you're kind of just watching and seeing what you feel like doing you more just get something that week and then you kind of have to do that because that's the only option you have in that moment and she said that in her introduction thing and it does ring true to me i don't know if it will be that way but i guess i experienced that before but if you follow a course of something that's actually not quite yours that'll actually get your wheels turning into making it yours and that's where you get the most creative because if you're following someone who is doing something that you really like then you're just trying to emulate that and kind of just copy that person that's kind of what happens with me and the by bun classes and i love them i mean i love what she's doing obviously and i still do but I think in a way her classes are not really helping me develop myself really it's making me do art which i like and i do create things i really like in the end but yeah they obviously don't look like my my work and um yeah i feel like if you're following something yeah that just gets your creative juices flowing that might be more interesting with the outcome and for myself at least that's what i'm hoping i'll see i got it at the early bird price which i don't know they sold that back in october i think and um by the way october i did start inktober and i failed <laughs> miserably i had a great plan which i guess now i can just do that on my own pace i wanted to create a zine um but yeah i didn't i didn't do inktober at all i don't i don't even have a good excuse for it <laughs> i just didn't do it uh but i guess i was just putting too much pressure on myself as usual um but yeah so let's see how that course works i'm very excited for it i can't wait i'm even just like itching for december to start because that's when they're gonna release the product list just to get something just to kind of Get excited for what we might be doing i really am looking forward to this and obviously is a good reason to get yourself a new sketchbook and all that so um yes good things to come hopefully <laughs> no, i'm already building up pressure great anyways uh i'm just rambling um so if you made it here awesome thank you for watching um i hope you had a good time and i really hope i managed to do this more regularly i'm very sorry if people are waiting out there um but yes i do have fun at doing this and i'm just trying not to be overly critical with what i put out and let's hope i won't be with this one either i can already tell like sometimes the light ah the auto balance it's just me me and autofocus we're not best friends but let's just roll with it anyways Goodbye and see you next time.